Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I've got November favorites for you today, and I thought to kind of whittle down a very, very long list that I had, I thought, you know what, let me just talk about like my favorite look from this past month. And that's what I have on my face today. So in talking about a look, I'm only going to be talking about like one product from each category. So I have like one favorite foundation, one favorite bronzer, Otherwise, I felt like I just had like 10 eyeshadow palettes and like six lipsticks, and I just don't think that's useful. It's also not very realistic because I wear a lot of other things. So if you're interested in this month's favorites, then just keep on watching. Let's start from the tippy tippy top. So primer. I have been enjoying this Tatcha Silk Canvas Primer. I really, I didn't buy it for a very long time. I was very hesitant. I thought because of the way the consistency looked that it was gonna be very poor filling, which is not something that I suffer too much from. I mean, I have some pores, but it's not just, you know, it's just not really a concern of mine. But when I read a little bit more about this and like put my assumptions away, I realized that this wasn't really um, a poor filling. It was more just sort of a skin smoothing. And what I liked the most about the description of this primer is that it's supposed to just give your skin this nice kind of protective barrier against makeup. And I thought that is very, very appealing. So I've been really loving this. That little like guitar pick thing that comes with this. When I hauled this, I mentioned I was gonna lose it. And one of you, thank you so much, commented that you had seen the owner of Tatcha or the creative director owner of Tatcha talk about like on QVC how that is just to kind of get you going. It's supposed to just sort of crack open like the layer, the top layer of this um, silk canvas. So that's what I did. I basically like made a little like scrape right down the middle. And since I'd made that first like kind of crack, I'll just start with my finger there and I'll just rub a little bit till I have just a bit on my fingertips and I'll just sort of dab and slowly kind of rub that into my skin. Really doesn't need a lot. I have been using this quite a bit and you can see it doesn't even look like I've touched it but except that the texture is different. But a little bit goes a long way. I'm sure you guys have heard that a thousand times now at this point. This is not a brand new product, but I'm really enjoying the extra step. The scent of this is really beautiful. It has that Camille oil scent, so it's really fresh. It's like partially floral, partially citrusy. I wanna say, it just, it really appeals to me. So I've really been enjoying this primer. And then the foundation that I feel like I've resurrected from the dead is the Clé de Peau, the foundation. I love this foundation, but I've talked about how moisturizing it is, how emollient it is, how it kind of borderlines on greasy if I don't powder it. So I did not wear this during the summertime. I just felt like it was gonna be a little bit too moisturizing for the summer months. But now that the colder months are here, the static electricity is at an all time high here in Vegas. It's super dry here and my heat has been kicking in quite a bit at night. So I thought I would take this out and I think my skin is really thanking me for it. So, so moisturizing and perfect for the colder months. So I've been enjoying this and I have it in the shade 020 for those of you curious. Over the past few months, my favorite concealer or eye brightener has been the Sicily uh, Fido Lumiere. I still love that, but I decided probably because I've been using the foundation, I've gone back to the Clé de Peau Radiant Corrector for Eyes. I have it in the shade Ivory. That's again, what I have on my face today. And it's great. It has, instead of the Sicily where it has that sponge uh, applicator, this has a little brush. I don't know if I have a preference of one over the other. I feel like they both just apply it to my skin and then I have to go in either with a brush or a finger or something to actually blend it in. So I don't have a preference over the sponge or the brush. I feel like now that I've kind of been going back and forth between the two, I feel like the Clé de Peau has a teensy bit more coverage than the Sicily. The Sicily is definitely very brightening. I think it's very smoothing. I think it makes my under eyes look very, very healthy. And this does as well, but, but this has, I wanna say a little bit more coverage. So I've been enjoying this over the past month. And then I always hesitate to talk about anything that's too new to my collection because, you know, how can it be a favorite if I just sort of introduced it mid month? But I have been using this a lot. And so I thought I should just mention it, but this is the Tom Ford Glow Drop in Liquid Sky. So this is the more bronzy of the two. The other one is like white. And when I covered this new uh, Winter Soleil collection from Tom Ford, I talked about how I didn't like the packaging, how the dropper is annoying. And I still don't like the packaging. I still think it could have been better in a little pump, but I have made peace with this particular applicator. So a lot of people were chiming in like, you're using the applicator wrong. Um, this action of it 
like doing this twist is supposed to suck up enough of the drops to give you at least one drop of it and it does so you don't have to go in and actually pump in again um, but what I don't like is that it is still very very messy so I've actually wiped around this opening you know quite a few times to kind of clean it up but it just doesn't seem to help it just seems like it's permanently kind of gross and gunked up so that is not my favorite but i have made amends with the dropper and thank you guys so much for all of your input on how to use a dropper because i was like totally spazzing out and not using it right so thank you very much so i haven't been using this necessarily in my foundation probably because i've been using the clay de po and that in and of itself is so emollient looking i've just been using this in a more targeted way so i've just been putting this in the places that i would normally highlight it's not overbearing in any way it just gives your skin like a really beautiful glow as the name would suggest so I've been using these glow drops quite a bit and again during these winter months when my skin is looking a little bit dry it's acting a little bit drier I really like to reach for these like creamier more liquid type of highlight products so this has come in really handy since I purchased it and the powder that I've been using to kind of set all of this down is the clay de po limited edition refining pressed powder in pink push me it's a very odd name. This actually, every time I pull this out, I think to myself, I have to get the regular translucent powder because this does have a pink sheen to it. I don't think it necessarily shows up too much on my skin. I think if anything, maybe it cools it down a little bit, but I was afraid that something this cool toned was going to make my skin look a little bit ashy, a little bit gray, but it doesn't do that. For those of you who are curious who maybe have seen this uh, just online or in person, there is an overspray on the pan and that, you know, your first couple of uses, you're gonna get a little bit of a sheen. That goes away once the overspray is gone. The powder itself is matte, there's no sheen to it. It's so, I mean, it's so finely milled. I feel like when I put it on, I feel like my skin just looks really, really refined. It looks really matte. It does a great job setting my makeup, which is probably the most important thing if that's why I'm using it, which it is. That's the step that I use this for. This to me is not a finishing powder in any way. It's definitely like more of a setting powder. So in terms of bronzer, I have taken this back out. I recently started receiving a lot more questions about Westman Atelier. I guess word is out that the line is available, um, that it's at Barney's, and it's probably gaining a little bit of popularity and gaining a little bit of traction. So because I've been getting like a lot of comments and questions on the video that I did reviewing the brand, I kind of went back and revisited their bronzer. And this is the one I've been reaching for the most this past month. It is their Beauty Butter Powder Bronzer. Now, when I first got it, it was incredibly creamy to the touch. I do wanna say that I think because of the texture of it and maybe the formulation, that it feels like it's gotten a little bit harder and a little bit drier and almost, almost to the point where I have a little bit of hard pan there. Now for me personally, because this bronzer is so pigmented and it is, it's such a deep, warm, bronzer it's probably a little bit too deep for my skin tone the little bit of hard pan that's on there that makes it a little bit more difficult to pick up has actually been very very helpful so I don't like overdo it with the bronzer so it just gives me this really really nice wash of color you know I'm using it in my contour areas but it's definitely a bronzer it definitely gives warmth to my skin it makes me look like I've been out in the sun I just think it's really really pretty on the skin but if you guys purchase this let me know if you feel like you're getting any sort of like texture change on the top there again it doesn't really bother me I think it's a blessing in disguise but I am just curious what your experience is so that is the Westman Atelier bronzer and then the blush that I've been loving this is again something uh, fairly new that came into my collection like midway in November but I've been reaching for this non-stop because I just like the kind of very neutral tone to it and that's the pink blush that's in this Tom Ford Soleil Eye and Cheek palette. It's this beautiful like rosy pink with just a hint of peach. It's almost like a my cheeks but better kind of blush color. I um, tend to wear very peachy, very nude, deeper kind of blushes. I've kind of placed them far back. I kind of blend that right into my uh, bronzer. But I think because eyeshadows that have been coming out have been a lot cooler a lot of eyeshadows that i've been using have been a lot cooler that i've been trying to like tone down my blush a little bit maybe enter the neutral zone a little so i've been attracted to like this tone of blush lately and this one in particular i love the formula it's definitely like a baked formula so there's not a lot of kick up it's just a really beautiful tone it has just the slightest bit of a sheen 
where it doesn't look matte on the skin, but it's not like it has any glittery particles or anything like that. And it just looks really, really natural on the skin. As for highlight, you guys can probably guess what I'm gonna mention, but this is the Shantikai Moonlit Pearl Glow Powder. So this is what they call a finishing powder. And it does look very, very subtle in the pan, but I would not use this as a finishing powder. I think it's a little too much. I think it's a little bit uh, too thick. Um, and the sheen, I think, almost borders on too much because I like to use this as a powder. And you can see the sheen I have. Now I do have the glow drops down, but I did apply powder over it. And so that kind of toned it down. I don't think I would want this level of shine all over my face. So I personally like to use this as a highlight, as a very subtle kind of glossy highlight. I just think it gives the most natural glow to your skin. I feel like with this on, I don't have like a highlight on. I feel like this looks like the light is just shining off of my naturally glowy skin. This is a beautiful, subtle kind of glossy highlight and I just love it. So just a couple quick mentions. I have the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. That's a longtime favorite. That's what I have in my eyebrows. And then the Lancome Monsieur Big Waterproof mascara, that's what I have on my eyes. I pretty much resurrected this recently. I've also been using the Chantecaille, but I just wanted, again, I'm trying to just name one thing for each category. So this one I love. It's waterproof, it does a great job volumizing and lengthening, so I do love this mascara. So let's get into eyes. This was a really, really hard pick because as you guys know, I have been uh, covering and talking and reviewing a lot of different eyeshadow palettes and I really haven't come across like a dud. You know, all of them are beautiful in their own right. I definitely like to mix up my eye look every day. Even if I put down the same like base products every day, you know, my eyeshadow will change, my lipstick will most likely change. So this was definitely a hard choice, but I think the one that I probably reached for a little bit more or reached for first and had to kind of talk myself out of and say, you know, you've been using that, let's try something else, is the Tom Ford Virgin Orchid. I love this formula. I did a whole video review on this, so I'm not gonna bore you with too many details, but the colors in here are gorgeous. They're on the cooler side, and because you can use them wet, you can really get some like very amped up colors. I have all four shades. Do I have all four? Yeah, I have all four shades on my lid. I basically do like a really soft, ombre effect where I go from like the deepest to the lightest in my inner corner. I have this um, basically like in my socket line, quote unquote crease area up here. And today I use them dry and it gives just a really beautiful, subtle, elegant kind of look. But if you wanna use them wet, like all of these will turn into basically like cream shadows and you'll get this much more opaque application, which is a much bolder statement on your eye, but they're beautiful like either way. I also feel like this palette is very timely. There's a lot of cooler tone palettes coming out and I think that this really falls right into that trend. I just think it's really beautiful. It's very, very low maintenance. It's so easy to put on. I basically just used uh, one brush for the three colors and then I used another brush for like the inner corner and that's it. They just blend beautifully together. And this is a very big favorite of mine. I've been wearing this quite a bit actually. I'm surprising myself, but this is the Chantecaille La Pearl uh, Liquid Eyeliner in Violette. So this came out recently with like this pearl highlighter and this violet color is so stunning. I really did not expect it to have as much depth as it does. It has this beautiful like bronzy base that shifts into the purple and then there's like little metallic glint in there. It's so, so pretty and it's so perfect for holidays. And I got a few questions and I hope I answered them, but I got a few questions asking whether or not any of the bits of this eyeliner kind of like fell into my eye or if they crumbled at all. And I did not have that experience with the most recent Chantecaille um, liquid eyeliners. But the two that came out over the summer, if I'm not mistaken, the Bleu and the Vert were a little bit chunkier. I still didn't have any sort of chunks or any glitter bits that fell into my eye at all, but that formula definitely is a little bit chunkier. So I feel like I could see that happening to someone, although it did not happen to me personally. But I do find the two that they came out with, this most recent collection, the formula is much smoother. It's a lot less chunky. So I'm really, really enjoying this Violette one. And the eyeliner I've been pairing with the uh, Chantecaille liquid eyeliner is the Tom Ford um, Eye Cole Intense in Bruise. I think I've mentioned this quite a bit, but this has like an, a dark, dark 
uh, purple eggplanty kind of color and so I have this in my waterline and I tightline a little bit with it and it's just a lovely pairing with this uh, Chantecaille. They really like complement one another. And then last but not least, lipstick. I, you guys knew, you guys knew I was going to talk about this. This is the La Bouche Rouge lipsticks that I picked up from Barney's in New York and I got it engraved with my initials. I mentioned these in my luxury lipstick uh, Roundup, I love the formula. They're so comfortable. They're not long wearing. I'm not gonna lie to you. They're just a cream lipstick, but they're so comfortable and moisturizing on the lips. I have uh, this color on. It is LBR 16, and these cases are refillable. So you buy the refill, at, you know, you can buy a set, you can buy refills, you can buy these cases separately, but they work together like seamlessly. They're magnetized super simple. Um, so I have this one and I have this black one and this is like a balm. So I prepped my lips with this and then I went in with this LBR 16 color and that's what I have on my lips. I think if I were to be super picky about my look today because my eyeshadow is definitely on the cooler side, I would probably put down Charlotte Tilbury's iconic nude. On my skin is, is definitely very, very cool and it cools down any lipstick that I wear on top of it. And this lipstick definitely leans a little peach. It leans a little bit warm. I would probably put down the Iconic Nude uh, lip liner, even though I didn't do that because I think it still looks fine. But you know, if I were to be super picky about, you know, having a really cohesive look, I would probably put that lip liner down to kind of cool this lipstick. So I love these cases. I love this like refillable idea. I love the formula of these lipsticks. Again, so, so comfortable. I love the colors. They're just awesome. I will try and remember to link to that uh, Luxury Lipstick Roundup uh, video in my description box if you guys are interested, check it out for sure. And that is it for this month's favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a little bit different kind of going through basically like my favorite look and talking about one product only. I'll probably return back to a more traditional format of kind of just talking about some of my favorite things, but I thought that this would be a nice change. So anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below what some of your favorites were for this past month or recently or all time. I would love to hear as always and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would love that and I'll see you in my next video.